Sorry, my wife is understanding. Everything is. Josephine is helping me. The next, next time you may see her up. Scottish country dancing. And this is a, a demonstration of the Strathspey step. And it will be performed by Elizabeth and Company. And it will be danced to the tune Carolyn's Dream.
back out to the park. And the doors turn over here right to the shoulder and face the park deck. I can take the four steps, return back to the place on the side, face along the sidewalk. And then you're going to go right and left.
I knew I wanted yeah. to. Elizabeth yeah, it's so much cooler. Yeah. And thank you to all the dancers. Let's give a hand. I can 
got bring one of these up. <laughs> if I talk really loud, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll just speak loudly. Um, it is such a joy to be back at the Carolyn Festival. I've really missed it these last few years, and almost every year that I've been part of this festival, we've done a collaboration with Young Tradition Vermont and their Fiddleheads program, which is a program for young, and it's not just for fiddle, it's for all instruments and, and for all levels. And um, I do a little residency with them, and I bring some of my harp students. So we bring the harpers and fiddlers and other instrumentalists together to work on some pieces by Terlaco Carolyn. And since the last time I was here, um, Young Tradition Vermont has become part of Vermont folk life, which is a really, really <laughs> exciting thing. And it's just gonna be wonderful for the future of what has been such an important program. And the new director, Ian Drury, is here with us today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Um, the Young Tradition Touring Group have just come back from 10 days in Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. Um, we worked all year preparing and performing and had the most wonderful time and Lux was with us on that trip and uh, Ava here is an alumni of that group and uh, youth leader of that as well. So it's just really great to, to bring these young folks together. We have a piece prepared for you today. Um, it's called Premonia. So it's not one of Carolyn's better known pieces, but I think it's an absolute gem. One of my favorite things to do in my practice time is to sit there with the Carolyn book and go through looking for, um, for gems. And I really think this is one of them. So we hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> Are we all ready? Lover's good?
introduce Ava White next. Ava has Ava's actually been working with me since she was nine years old, and she's now 18, and she's just back from her first year at Smith College. And um, yeah, way to go. And she's also just competed in one of the most, she was a finalist in one of the most prestigious harp competitions for Scottish music in the country, um, the Princess Margaret of the Isles competition down in Charleston, right? Um, and she played absolutely beautifully as a finalist there. So I'm immensely proud of her. And she's going to play a couple of tunes that I think might be familiar to many of you who love Carolyn's music. Um, she's going to be playing Eleanor Plunkett and um, Bridget Cruz, which are two of my very favorite Carolyn tunes. These are the first two tunes I think I learned by Carolyn, and I think the first tunes I ever played here, which might have also been around the time I first started playing harp. So this is kind of a call back to that time, and thank you so much for having me, and hope you enjoy.
So Eva and I are going to play a duet for you now. Um, this is a tune called Carolyn's Cup, and it actually predates Carolyn. It's a beautiful Irish song and air uh, known as Bruich na Caragabana, the bank of the white rocks. Um, but this, I think, was Carolyn's own setting of it, which has more of a, a waltz-like feel and a tighter meter, and he's added a few um, features that are really quite beautiful. So, Carolyn's cup. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> um, I'm going to stay up here for a little bit and um, play a few pieces for you on my own. And um, I'm going to start out with two that I don't think I've ever played at this festival before. Um, 
they're, uh, they're new to me in the last couple of years. And uh, the first is called, this is a pair of tunes that are both for Carolyn's patrons, Mrs. Costello, and uh, I believe the second, Mrs. Maxwell. And um, the second one in particular has a really sort of um, Baroque 18th century feel, which I really enjoy playing. Um, the first one, I feel like I can hear a little bit more of the old Irish harp tradition in it. So this is Mrs. Costello and Mrs. Maxwell. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I love the drama of that last one. Um, so I'm going to shift over to some of um, some of Carolyn's more major tunes. <laughs> I've been really into his minor tunes lately. Um, and this is a pair of tunes that I dearly love because I have played them often with um, Hilary Farrington and Benedict Kohler, um, who are longtime friends of this festival and, uh, and dear friends of mine. The first is called Keen O'Hara. It's a tune for one of Carolyn's patrons. And then it goes into um, the setting associated with Carolyn of the, two, it's called the Two William Davises. And this is in fact a tune that came over from Scotland and it's well known as um, the classic Scottish tune, Killy Cranky. Um, but it, it certainly has a, sort of an Irish flair to it in this setting and it's played often as a hornpipe. And Fran and John, am I right in thinking this was your wedding processional? as well. Keen O'Hara. Oh, it's one of my favorite tunes. This goes out to the two of you. I can't thank you enough. This, this is our anniversary. It's your anniversary. Happy anniversary.
Thank you. So this next one is a set that I, I learned for this festival a number of years back. It begins with a tune called Nancy Cooper. And it has a really close start to the first piece I played, so I have to separate uh, John O'Reilly and Connor O'Reilly. And um, I've actually had a broken lever on my harp for a number of months, which I just fixed in a Zoom call with my harp maker, and it, this set uses the lever, and I'm so excited to have this lever working again. <laughs> um, so I couldn't wait to brush this one up. So this is Nancy Cooper, John O'Reilly, and Connor O'Reilly.
Thank you all so much. I have one last piece to share with you um, before. I know there's some really beautiful Carolyn music coming up, and I can't wait to hear it. Um, I, I have just loved this festival so very much for so many years, and I absolutely adore Carolyn and his music, and I love this community so much. It's great to be among you again. Um, and this is a very, very special piece to me. This is Mr. O'Connor. It's a piece written for one of Carolyn's many patrons. And it starts out as a sort of, almost has like a minuet feel. It's very sort of classical, Baroque in, in nature. And um, that's a two-part tune. And then it goes into another one of his just delightful 18th century jigs, which unlike modern jigs, there seem to be a lot of 16th notes in these, the, the 18th century um, jigs, which are just really fun to play. Um, and this piece actually, this is the piece I warm up with on the harp almost every time I sit down to practice. And it is, every time I play it, I find something new to love about it. Um, so I will leave you with Mr. O'Connor. Thank you all so much.
Dominic Dodge, everybody. Thank you again. And uh, I have a couple of announcements before our next speaker, our next musician. I'd like uh, to everyone to thank the uh, volunteers today who put this uh, festival together. And um, we have uh, a bit more before dinner here. We have uh, a speaker and then we have an open stage. We have some performances for you. I want to announce that the uh, six o'clock dinner time is a new, um, uh, a new thing going on, which is the Worcester Historical Society is doing a fundraiser. So they're providing the food. Some folks have reservations for their food. They'll go up first. And if you don't, um, there, there is more food than reservations. So you can also get in line and have something to eat also and pay for it. So that is all out of the way. Give a hand to my dad for putting the festival together. And Elizabeth, of course, doing all the organizing. And there is a Carolyn Festival Committee that works together all year long. So let's give the committee a hand as well. Now, one of our uh, local treasures, Art Edelstein, back in 2001, wrote this book and it was published, Bear Melodies. And it is Turlock Carolyn, an Irish harper. And Art's one of the folks who really has brought Carolyn uh, here uh, to the forefront, not only here in central Vermont, but also just in the, the broader, uh, you know, along with my dad and a lot of other folks, just bringing this music right to the forefront, Dominic Dodge, everybody here. And uh, Art was ahead of the wave on that, I think. So um, why don't we uh, give up this stage to Art Edelstein? Also in the book is, and it's for sale here, a CD of his wonderful guitar playing, uh, along with uh, a harpist named Tim Newcomb. So, thank you so much, and here's Art. Hello. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's better. My, my banjo playing buddy over here, you know, making sure that my dulcet Brooklyn accented tones come through, right? Okay. Um, I have a prepared talk. I don't know if I'll use much of it um, because I tend to be one of these people who, as the, the thought hits. But um, this is uh, the 30th, 30 years ago, I had uh, essentially on this date just been home from a trip to Ireland of three weeks where I had um, taken several cameras, a whole suitcase load of film, and had gone to photograph Carolyn's Ireland, which I thought in my um, dreams of uh, fame and fortune I would make into a, a lovely uh, coffee table book of literature um, and photos of Ireland. Um, needless to say, um, if you do get the book or whatever, you'll find Three pictures, two on the front cover, one on the back, and a much younger Art Edelstein with hair um, on the front, uh, on the back of the book. Yes, this came out in 2001, and it didn't just get published like that. Let me tell you, um, research in those days before heavy-duty internet was not easy. Um, but since I started looking into, into the music, and I'm saying Carolyn, and that's because he would have said Carolyn, not O'Carolyn, by the way, okay? Um, 
So as I look around the room, I see some familiar faces, but I don't see as many folks, I mean John for sure, Mr. Paul over there. Um, so a lot of you, I suspect, are somewhat new to both the festival and maybe Carolyn's music, um, which is good, as a matter of fact. And um, so we've seen a resurgence of Carolyn's music and interest in Carolyn since those uh, hazy days of the early 1990s when I started on this uh, journey to get into the music. Um, Elizabeth asked me to talk about a little bit, I think, more of the process here of how I got into this than uh, just the life. And the reason is of, there are many ways that you can learn about Carolyn. Yes, you can buy the book. There's also Donald O'Sullivan's book, The Life and Times of an Irish Harper, which was the first biography of Carolyn. Um, and I used it extensively in my research. But um, I'm not only a historian by education, I'm also a journalist. And that is not the most journalistically written uh, biography. It was probably researched in the 30s and 40s. And he was an academic, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so it's a little stiff, let's put it that way. So when my quest was to find out about Carolyn, after getting, um, what happened was I played the music. And um, on guitar primarily. And I was playing with some friends. We were playing tunes like John Irwin and George Brabazon and Shebeg Shamor. Now, most of the time, if you follow Irish music, you know that there's no author, right? No composer. It's Morrison's Jig. Maybe it's by Morrison or whatever. Um, but this one had a specific uh, composer. And I said, whoa, this is interesting. So I said, oh, I'll go and I'll look up, get a couple of books on him and, you know, read up on, so I know whose music I'm playing. Well, there wasn't much, except for the O'Sullivan uh, biography, which I had to get from Maine, by the way. And I found a couple of uh, harp journals and from Ireland primarily. So I didn't have a lot to go on. And um, I went to Ireland because I wanted a visual of where this man had lived. And as we know, many of the tunes are for patrons, um, have written in honor of them. Um, and I must tell you, that's a good way to make a little extra coin in those days, is to write a tune for a rich patron, who you hope then will reciprocate with a couple of shillings or more, or gifts or whatever because Carolyn is a survivor. He's um, not a dilettante. Uh, he's, uh, had he not been blinded, he probably would have been a, just a, worked at the forge, which is where his father, what his father did. So here's an instance of a, de a debilita debilitating illness, which is smallpox, which turn, makes him blind, turns into his way of, uh, of making his way in the world. So what I got, saw when I went to Ireland was that m many of the uh, places that you would think would be, you know, the famous, beautiful houses of the rich um, in, in Ireland were, frankly, dumps. And that's primarily because uh, it's a long time ago. I mean, this is the two, he's been gone for 285 years. All right. So in the late 1600s and early 1700s, these would have been pretty nice houses. But by 1993, m most of the people who um, lived in these houses were poor farmers. Um, so I was kind of shocked at what I saw. And it kind of had an effect on me of trying to understand, you know, recreating from something that was very, not really what I expected to see. Um, but over the years of collecting um, information and listening to music, which by the way, when I started, 
now you can go, I mean, I have a discography and you can find those CDs or you can look online, you can type it, you can Google O'Carolyn and you'll get pages of books. Yeah, you're shaking your head, you know. Pages of books, uh, whole lists of CDs. You can go on Spotify. I wonder what O'Carolyn is thinking about when he sees, oh, I'm on Spotify now. Well, that's pretty, you know. YouTube Music, um, Apple Music. He's everywhere. Um, it, well, there was almost no internet in 1993, and there were not a lot of recordings. The first one with Carolyn's music is Sean O'Reader and Tori Kulan. It's the music of the nobles. 1967 on Gail Lynn Records, and it's an LP. Remember those? Um, and then there's a couple by Derek Bell, who was the um, harper and a keyboard, I believe he played with the Chieftains. Um, and he's in the book, by the way. Uh, I interviewed him uh, for it. Uh, and then we have Patrick Ball. How many of you have heard of Patrick? Well, of course you have. Patrick Ball, who is a Californian, who really did a lot to, I think, get this music going. As a matter of fact, there was a review of an album by Patrick Ball that I read in some music publication that got me to go, that's it. So I'm a journalist. I'm looking for a book project. And this obscure Irish composer starts invading my psyche here. So that's why I, yeah, that's why I got into it. Um, and that's why I went and did as much research as I could do with the limited resources. First of all, I don't speak Gaelic and I don't read Gaelic. So that cuts out a lot of material from the 17, early 1700s in Ireland, okay? And so uh, I didn't have a lot to go on except a couple of uh, substantial books of history and then O'Sullivan. Um, what I try to do, and if you're interested, there are several copies of Fair Melodies, which, by the way, the title of the book comes from an editor at Acoustic Guitar Magazine. I submitted an arrangement of George Brabazon for acoustic guitar in, in um, by the way, in a strange tuning, open G tuning. And she um, gave the title, Fair Melodies, uh, music by Turley Carolyn. And that's how I got the uh, title for the book. Uh, I said, yeah, that works for me. Uh, so you have the benefit, even if you're just jump, jumping on the Carolyn train, how many of you are very, pretty new to this music? A couple of you. All right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got a, it doesn't sound like um, Planksty music. By the way, Planksty, which is an Irish band uh, from the 70s. So Planksty, th there's... And I see listings of the tunes and Planksty this and Planksty that. And I've heard people say this and that. Planksty is just jumble, work, uh, jumble um, sounds. It's not, it's not, doesn't mean anything, by the way, as far as my research could go on that. Um, so we're, we're very lucky. The, Carolyn Train really moved along fast, especially starting in the 90s. Uh, my wife and I were, uh, were in a disagreement. I said, you know, it took until maybe 95, 96 for there to be a fair amount of music. And you know how things snowball, especially in, in the world of music. And as more and more CDs and more and more internet, et cetera, more and more musicians, here you are, uh, here I am, we get into this. Um, it's different. It's not, you know, the jigs and reels of the Bothy band, the uh, planks, the uh, um, name whatever Irish band you want. It's gotten to the point this year, two of my um, music friends, Steve Baufman out in California, an incredible guitarist, did a whole album of Carolyn music, and Simon Mayer, an off the, off the wall mandolin player. I mean, he's just gorgeous from England, 
did a Carolyn album, and he explores, it almost gets into, a, I want to say, a jazzy-ish mode of sort of improv along with the melody, because he plays mandolin, fiddle, guitar, mandola, you name it. And they're still going. And these, um, so it's moving along. It's at a level now of sustainability on its own. That is the music, which is essentially what we're here for, to listen to the music. If I can, if, <laughs> does that mean keep going or? <laughs> uh, one more minute? Yeah, one, two, good. All right. Um, see, I wrote all this stuff out and I didn't need any of it. <laughs> this is the intro. Uh, <laughs> who knew? Um, so we're there. The, your job as audience and as musician is to seek this out. Uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of music. Um, I just saw the other day on, I don't know if you're familiar with Bandcamp.com. Yeah, there's a guitar player now who's just released a new album on Bandcamp um, that I saw for the first time. It's everywhere. Um, m much of it stays to the, the kind of the traditional sound, but there are, they're moving off into a variety of areas here. Um, before I forget, so I will use this um, to make sure I get this right. Uh, we want to, it's too bad, if, anybody here for the first time at this festival? Yeah. It's too bad that it did rain today. It's good that they had the foresight. John and Fran and Elizabeth to say, we're not going to do this outside. But you missed a wonderful, very Vermont thing, which is outdoor concerts. And uh, it was a lovely thing. And they had sunshine for how many of the years? 14 years or something that they put it on? 13. This is the 14th year? Okay, I wasn't sure. It started in 2007. I was one of the originals along with John and Fran. And they set it up to be on their anniversary, essentially, right? Um, so you're, you missed that. But it's, we really have John. Where is Fran? Uh, she's. Oh, I see. All right, thank you, John. Well, the Mallory's for providing a uh, space, and Elizabeth Schwartz, who's over there, who I, I must... The woman is so organized, it's bizarre almost um, how, how organized she is. And I have to tell you, and then I will basically be done, but I wanted to say, I have never, I've performed locally at restaurants and stuff, playing a lot of Carolyn music, and you know, people eat mostly at those events. I never had a groupie until I met, met Elizabeth, who like fell in love with the music, and you know, I had something to do with getting her interest in it. So, but that was pretty amazing. So to leave you, I want to say that although this festival is, uh, ha is at its end, I, I think you've made friends among, with, you know, people you never would have met any other way, per, probably, from different states. We have folks here from New Hampshire. Uh, no, sorry, <laughs> New Hampshire. <laughs> um, and other parts of, uh, I assume, New England. <laughs> Quebec, right. Well, there's the folks I just met today from uh, Montreal, uh, with that woman with a very nice voice, etc. So you've made friends. You probably have learned a whole lot. Your musicianship, if you've been doing this for a while, is probably going just like that. And we have to thank an obscure Irish, blind Irish um, traveling musician who I'm sure if there is a heaven, I'm a skeptic, if there is a heaven is saying, whoa, what happened here? So with that, I want to just thank again the Mallory's, Elizabeth, and all of you wonderful people who have come to these uh, festivals and are hopefully just going to carry on the tradition with you. So with that, I will bid you a fond adieu.
Thank you, Art. Art Edelstein, everybody. Fair Melodies, if you buy it now, you can get an autograph. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, we have here on this clipboard the next round of performances. And so, buckle your seatbelts. First on our list, we have, are you ready? Yazi and Luli Zeitner. And we are missing the, the third, the, the, uh, the brother who has moved to Hawaii. Remind me of his name? Oh, Oliver. Oliver is in Hawaii, so you could just do with that what you want. is on. There we go. Hi. Um, yeah, it's great to be back at the festival. Um, thank you. Elizabeth invites us to come every year, and we are always delighted to come. And usually, yes, we are here with our brother, but he has deserted us for a warmer climate. Um, <laughs> we are going to play for you a piece that we learned a few years ago for the O'Carolyn Festival, so you may have heard us play it before. And it's been in my head all these years as O'Carolyn's Rambles through Cashel, but then I looked it up recently and it's actually O'Carolyn's Ramble, only one ramble, to Cashel, not through Cashel. So O'Carolyn's Ramble to Cashel. It's a beautiful minor kind of rambling piece, of course. Um, so here you go, O'Carolyn's Rambles to Cashel.
Thank you very much. Yazi and Luli Zeitner. Check, check. Oh, thank you. And next, Andrea, are you ready? One of our longtime Carolyn, uh, uh, not only uh, players, but also teachers and dance uh, uh, instructors. Uh, bringing something very special today so it is really nice honestly to see all these faces again folks that it's it's been a few years so welcome back uh, to the carolyn festival and um andrea's on her way up after mary will be uh bob and mary paul do you have andrea andrea's coming Thank you. I'm going to take a, a minute in this gap to say uh, um, that uh, we're working very hard on having uh, uh, further Carolyn festivals uh, around the Northeast region. Um, we're hoping that we can ar arrange at least one of them in the Upper Valley of New Hampshire, um, which may change the, the Vermont flavor a little bit. But w we think we belong here, too. Are you playing? Are you playing? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Sorry for the delay. We ch made a little change because some people had to leave. Um, I had a wonderful workshop earlier today. Um, this was a suggestion that Elizabeth came up with and I'm helping with. I just want to be sure someone is still here.
This is a tribute to someone who's new this year. And um, at the workshop, this was a tune that I learned. It was a tune suggested by Elizabeth. So we need to have the person of honor <laughs> here to do that. Back there. Mary, are you joining us on this also? Are you joining us on this? Do you have your harp? All right. Okay. This better be good, right, after all of this? who gets really hot. These little neck fans are wonderful. They blow up on, upward, run on a battery, and I'm always very hot, so this will get me through the concert quite nicely. Uh, oh, we need you to, to be visible. Okay, I'll be visible. We're, <laughs> this is to welcome you to um, the Carolyn Festival, to the young players you're working with and the, and the various folk things you do. And Thank you. I understand your father's name is John, is that yeah, correct? John Dury, yeah. <laughs> so this morning, or whoops, early afternoon in the workshop that I had, there were 25 to 30 players. And we, um, we learned the landlady and John Drury, second ear. I knew that. Um, the first air was played quite a lot. The second air is not even in the festival book yet, but maybe this will bump it up a notch. So Elizabeth and I thought that would be a nice tribute That's to welcome sweet. you. you. Um, they probably had 20 minutes or so to learn it, so, um, and some of the group already had to leave, unfortunately, but here we are. All set? Twice through. One, two, three, one, two, three.
It really was very cool to have a whole room full of playing them. A few more in the audience weren't, either didn't have instruments or weren't quite sure they were ready to do this, but maybe another year. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm usually solo because I'm coming up from Boston and it seems like a long way to go, although we play a lot of carolin down there. Um, and this year I'd hoped to have guitar, but um, that didn't quite work out, so I'm on my own. And according to my checking in with Elizabeth, I believe a couple of these tunes have never been played here. So this is a, this is a debut, and I actually could use some water, too, if anyone could bring me. If I may, real quick, I just want to thank you for, for playing that, and this has been a treat for me. I grew up not very far from here, and um, my father, John Drury, and my mom, Martha Pellerin, um, uh, were both in family bands, and it was really nice to see Kenrick and Grant and Art, who played music in my kitchen when I was growing up, and are all part of um, really forming a part of who I am and inspiring me to continue to play traditional music. So. It's been very sweet to reconnect with you guys and, uh, and be here today and, and hear you all play and, and dance. And so thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Nice. Okay. Hopefully I can sound as good as the students I had today. I'm re recovering still from some hand surgery, so. Um, this tune is called William Ward, and um, I know in Art Edelstein's book, he listed all the possible recordings he could find of various tunes, and two of these either have never been recorded or maybe one person had recorded it at the time. But this one is called William Ward, and my grandmother was Lula May Ward, so I thought, oh, well, someday I should learn a Ward tune. So this is it. <clears throat> and it sounds better on a wooden flute, but I can't get the holes covered right now. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I was a hot child, a hot baby, and it's still going on, so I have my fan. Um, this next one, uh, I think someone mentioned before in talking about um, Carolyn's Welcome, there are a bunch of Carolyn tunes that don't actually have a title. Uh, if they did, we don't know who they might have been written for or why. So this is one of the numbered ones, and I believe those are not played much either. Um, and it's perfect for this hot day because it's about a winter day. <laughs> I was hoping that would cool me off. Um, I'm thinking of the rain falling softly on your fields in Ireland, but this is snow falling softly. Um, I only knew it as number 176, and um, a few months ago I heard it on a recording by, a, um, by the Quadriga Consort, Renaissance Music, and it was called um, Music for a Cold Winter Day, number 176, Carolyn. <laughs> So I think it evokes kind of a quiet, the snow coming down and maybe a cozy fire in the fireplace. Um, this one is another William. William Ward was the first one I played, and um, this is another one that um, struck my fancy, and I realized barely recorded, barely played, and it's a lovely tune. And so this is William Eccles. That's one of the few E's to be in the directory of, <laughs> of uh, alphabetical listings here.
last one is one I think I've played once here. Um, Captain Higgins, who also happens to be a William, <laughs> or happened to be a William. So three Williams, and I know Dominique played two William Davises. That was a different one, because one William Davis was a really nice guy, and the other one wasn't at all. So, <laughs> I have no idea how all of my Williams were, but um, anyway, this is Captain Higgins, and um, in, at the end of some of Carolyn's tunes, has, he's added on a jig that's almost like an ending or a coda to the tune, so that's what happens at the end of this. Andrea Mori, everyone. And uh, next up, uh, we have on the Hammer Dulcimer, this is uh, Bob Paul. Let's give a hand to Bob. Um, I don't. I think I remember a Carolyn Festival that I didn't see Bob and Mary here, so they've been here right along and they're key members of the uh, Angel Band and the CDs that that band produced are fantastic. I don't think there are any on the table, but I do believe that Bob and Mary can, can get you some, so I know they're going to get me some. And uh, when, when Bob finishes, his uh, lovely partner Mary will come up and they'll play together.
Uh, let's see. How about, is this one on? Okay, here I am. Okay, um, I'm gonna do two tunes and then Mary's gonna come join me. Uh, this first tune is called Carolyn's Receipt. Sometimes people call it Carolyn's Receipt for drinking. Uh, one thing I found interesting about the dulcimer, hammer dulcimer, is that uh, it seems uh, to work for Carolyn music pretty well, and I was, we tried to figure it out for a long time, and then we finally figured out that it's because Carolyn played on a wire-strung harp, whereas people today play nylon mostly, and the wire-strung harp has a lot of sustain, and the uh, the low end of it, the accompaniment, was therefore very sparse, so that it wouldn't get too muddy. Um, so this dulcimer does the same kind of thing, and so it's like, well, that's interesting. Maybe I play closer to the way he played than a lot of harp players do. But we'll find out. That may be just all my imagination. This second tune is Robert Jordan. Um, one thing about a Carolinist music is it's very versatile for a lot of things. And this one sounds like it's meant for a soundtrack for uh, a Western movie. So, uh, this is also the key of A, which is kind of unusual for Carolin music. But, uh, Robert Jordan.
who's going to join me now. Play a couple of uh Yeah, uh, so you gotta be the key that's ready for Miss Noble. You're gonna be ready for Miss Noble. Are you keyed up? Are you okay. 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 This is a medley. Uh, first tune is. Uh, Mabel Kelly, which uh, I, we decided to milk it for all it's worth and see what happens. Just focusing on the melody alone, and it's kind of like a Gregorian chant, but uh, it's kind of the old, kind of harks back to the to old music as opposed to the the Baroque and all that classical stuff. Start one more time.
Ready for the last one? Okay, this is, will be our last tune. Uh, I'm honored to say this tune uh, we recorded and it found extended airplay on our local college radio station as a background music to a public service announcement um, for several years. So it's a pleasure, pleasant, pleasure to hear it. But, uh, Carol, Carolyn's Welcome, which, is, uh, which got its name when the Pope John XXIII arrived in Ireland and uh, kissed the ground, and uh, the uh, chieftains were there to greet him, and, ever, and they played this tune. And ever since then, it's been called uh, Carolyn's Welcome. Number 171 in the O'Sullivan book. One, two, three, one. Mary and Bob Paul. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Arg. <laughs> well, I have one more uh, group to introduce to you tonight. And so this last uh, tune before dinner will be performed by my dad, John Mallory, and Fran, his lovely spouse, also accompanied by Phil Kirk and Grant Orenstein.
Okay. That's John Van Thielen Grant. Thank you so much. And that does conclude the official performances for today. So thank you so much for being here at the 14th Annual Carolyn Festival. My job is finished, so I will be hitting the road. Thank you so much for um, being here, and it was so lovely to see you again. Thank you.